Welcome back to Jail Time Pod. It's your host, Greg. Got a video today from Poor Man's Podcast. And destroys feminist panel. I always love these. Please like share them below. I really appreciate that. Let's get it. Ciao. It's ciao time. Well, a new shocking report calls violence against women and girls a national emergency. That says 3,000 offences are recorded every single day. Well, police chiefs warn that young men are being radicalised online into extreme misogyny by influencers like Andrew Tate, in the same way that terrorists draw in followers. So are influencers like Andrew Tate radicalising young boys online, and could they even be to blame for rising violence against women? Well, the writer and broadcaster Emma Webb says influencers like Andrew Tate are promoting misogyny, while the podcaster Jake Julius says boys need more... Shout outs to our man from Rattlesnake. Or masculine role models. Uh, well, okay, Jake, let's have you put your case first. Well, I think that the real problem you're looking at here, particularly with the UK, is that you have a feminized liberal culture that has imported a much more masculine culture yes. with mass immigration of Islamic people. Yes. And these people have very pronounced ideas about gender roles. And these people don't believe that Timmy can become Tammy if he decides to, if he's blue hair, Marxist teacher tells him he can. So you guys have a lot bigger problems to worry about than Andrew Tate. So it's yes. laughable. Yes, Jake. And that's a great start. And I'm happy he started with that because as a black American from the outside, kind of looking into what's happening to white Europeans in their own country, I think it's very interesting to see how the Western European ideas are being used against them and just are failing in real time. Yep. This idea of egalitarianism, the idea that men and women are the same. It pushes women into the workforce because they think since men and women are the same, I might as well go out and compete against men, which in turn makes it so that Western countries aren't even at replacement level anymore. Western Europeans, European culture in, in European countries don't even they they're they're not even at replacement level and they're importing people that don't even believe in the same ideas they're encouraging them to practice whatever religion they want even if it doesn't align with the ideas in that culture and what's going to happen is if you're not at replacement level these people are coming in by the hundreds of thousands and then they're and they're reproducing like crazy like the the, the the population of Cambodians soared when we were able to come to the United States because we saw the opportunity. We have like our kids are safe. We're not going to, you know, die in landmines. So we were pumping out babies. All of my aunts had three kids each. My dad had three kids each. It is what it is. It's a lot more Cambodians now. They're having children, five kids per family, while you're only having one kid per family. You're just going to get replaced. Yep. Europeans, and in, in my opinion, I think in the next 30 years, Europeans are going to be a minority in European countries, which is very interesting to see from the outside looking in as a black man. But um, yeah, these these uh, egalitarian Western ideas are going to collapse on themselves. Transgenderism is going to disappear once it's taken over by another culture that does not agree with that uh, uh, that ideology. Abortion's gone. Uh, the the female right to vote might be gone. Uh, you know, so a lot of these ideas that are traditionally leftist are going to disappear if you continue to be more and more leftist, which is very interesting to me to watch from the outside looking in. It's but that was a good take from him. I think that was an interesting way to start it. Maybe that'll make some light bulbs go off in the Europeans' head to see that they're being replaced in their own countries. But it's like the softest takeover I've ever seen. I think it's very interesting. Okay, well, Emma, Andrew Tate, lots of people have mentioned, I think even teachers are now warning against Andrew Tate in the classroom. How much influence do you think he has? And is he promoting misogyny in a way that could potentially encourage men and young boys to be violent against women? Well, he is very popular, um, but actually I do agree with Jake. I think that we do have much what? bigger problems than Andrew Tate when it comes to um, people's attitudes towards women. The problem with Andrew Tate is that he is very popular, but he's also, um, I do think, a very good role model for men. Um, I don't think he's a more traditional male uh, vote in any way. Um, and I, I don't think, it, you know, in many ways, that he... Um, is, is promoting the opposite of the kind of manners that we want young boys to have towards women. Emma, I think your line, is, your line is a bit inaudible, yes, um, so here, we'll right. try and fix that. Mm. Um, and should we turn back to uh, Jake? Because uh, the problem yeah, is... Andrew Tate, yeah, I've I seen some a, of it. Jake, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, clips of Andrew Tate, and I've watched some interviews. That's all they've ever seen is clips. 
issues with him. And he seems to almost be radicalizing himself. He seems to have gone from sort of promoting, you know, men need to stand up for themselves and be strong partners to women, to actually women are property and women are of lesser value. Uh, do you think that's fair to say that he's got more extreme in his position? No, I don't. I think, it, first of all, you have to understand that a lot of what he does is on Twitter. It's comedy. So you have to take it with, with a pinch of salt. And if you actually listen to his interviews in more detail, you'll find that his views are actually much more nuanced than that. So maybe go and research it. But some of the things that Andrew Jake, Tate I've does not I've actually listened to promote, him at length. I've actually listened to him at length. Oh, well, you've, you've straw Mandy's position, so maybe listen again. But some of the positions that he doesn't promote are like, things like crime, pornography, transgenderism, video games, male feminism, drinking, taking drugs, and also new age spiritualism. <clears throat> some things that men are actually turning towards that are actually destructive. Well, it could be argued that men turning towards uh, forcing women to stay at home and uh, and, and be subjugated in, 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 in domestic... We're not forcing women to stay at home. Women have the choice. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? We can't just go marry women and make them stay at home, even if we don't make enough money. <laughs> like, it's just stupid. Dick life is also fairly dangerous, perhaps more dangerous than video games. Really? Well, this is the thing that obviously you've been feminized by the feminism that is in the uh, water that you drink and the air that you breathe, my friend. But this is <laughs> the, the problem with feminism that they, they think that women are being subjugated when actually a lot of women would love to stay home. A lot Absolutely. of women would love to be stay at home mothers. Absolutely. And actually, it's one of the most difficult jobs that you can possibly do is raise people. So if you raise three or four people and you're a mother, then you've done an amazing thing. But unfortunately, with messaging like this, the feminist messaging will actually denigrate motherhood. A lot of women won't feel subjugated, I'll tell you that much. Thank you. I find it hard to sort of understand how I've been feminized if I think that women have a role in the workplace. I don't, I don't quite see how that is more feminine. Uh well, the reason why it's considered to be feminized by some people's perspective is because it buys into the feminist egalitarian idea that men Correct. and women are the same. When you say that women, when you promote for women to go out into the workforce and compete against men, it seems feminized because any man that's competed against women knows that by and large, women just don't have the biological mechanisms to compete against men because they're not designed to do that. So the reason it's seen as feminine is because you're kind of tilting your hat or promoting the idea still that women can compete against men or that women are equal to men in any kind of way in terms of competition in the workforce it's just yeah i agree the, the side that how they seem not like to argue it is like they should be able to do that they should be able to go work and stuff and we net and men have not said they couldn't men just said we don't want usually women that do do that like that's the problem like the the little nuance of how we're speaking to each other is just missing each other slightly or both sides are ignoring the other side. It could be both of that too. It's not possible. <clears throat> we have testosterone. That helps us wake up every morning to want to go out and conquer the world for our families. These yeah, are right. just mechanisms that women don't have that gives them a biological disadvantage. The fact that they give birth, they have to be out of work for nine months in order to give birth. That's a biological disadvantage for work. So when you like the and the craziest part is right now she's trying to she she i heard her say earlier that andrew tate makes it seem like women are lesser than and i think the idea of egalitarianism makes it so that women seem lesser than it kind of shits on the feminine role of being a mother Correct. which is interesting because they promote the idea that a woman's purpose isn't to give birth but they literally have a womb that's like saying that Humans aren't supposed to walk, but we have legs. It's just, it's just ridiculous. So to promote the idea that women should go out and compete against men in the workforce, to me, seems to be more against the natural role of a woman according to biology. It seems to me that that ideal would kind of lessen the, the role of motherhood by, by claiming that you're more noble if you go out and compete against men. And I think by and large, the egalitarianism that they want makes it so that we are all measured by metrics for men. We don't use any women metrics at all. That's the stupid thing. When there's other metrics that are very important that women contribute. That's the problem that this egalitarian it only cares about workforce and create making money when 
motherhood doesn't make money, but it's just as valuable as most careers out there. Like Jake is saying, uh, I'm at 28 right now. I know women that have went to school to be lawyers, judges, doctors. And at this age, when they start to feel that biological urge to give birth to children, if you ask them, would they rather become a doctor at this point or be with the doctor, be married to a doctor and stay home? Many of them would say they'd rather be married to the doctor than become the doctor. And that's just my honest take. So, yeah, I think it's a huge disservice. I think it is very feminine for a man to try to say that women should be out in the workforce competing against men because we know, as, as a competitive male myself, I know by and large, by and large, there are some. And with technology, it gives women a little bit more of an advantage to be able to compete against men in the workforce because there's less brute strength involved. Correct. But when you look at the top, it's damn near always going to be men because men have literal biological mechanisms that help us compete. That gives us the urge to compete that women, by and large, just don't have. So, yeah, that, that's why the idea seems to be feminized because it comes from the feminist idea that men and women are the same and we have the same roles in society. And by and large, it's just not true. Um, but should we turn back to Emma Webb? Let's hope that your uh, audio is working. What do you make of this entire dichotomy? Um, look, I, just to repeat what I said in case um, people couldn't hear me, I don't, I don't think that Andrew Tate is the problem when it comes to violence against women. Um, I think that he's not a good role model for um, for young men. I think that men lack good role models. Uh, many men, increasingly young boys, are living in um, households where they don't consistently have a father present. Sure. Um, and I actually think that Jake is right about mass migration. Lou, do you think that people leave their misogynistic culture at the border when they migrate to a new country? No, of course they don't. And there was one example recently of somebody who raped a child in Germany and was somehow in the UK for five months before being wow. arrested. So we have all sorts wow. of problems um, beside Andrew Tate, but that doesn't mean that it isn't, he isn't a malign influence in, in the sense that he isn't a good role model. And I think actually the way that the term is so... So just because he's not a good role model, there's a shitload of people that are not good role models that are up there. Sexy Red, you know, Carney B, fucking... There's probably plenty of men too. I just can't think of very many just because I'm not into movie stars and stuff like that. So I can only think of the ones I, I talk about the most. Misogyny is used can also be a problem because very often people are accused of sexism um, if they open a door for a woman or pull out Correct. a chair for a woman. But actually, I think restoring some of those traditional manners between men and women would actually... And exactly that's what it was. Traditional manners. They were just manners. It wasn't misogyny or anything because I held doors for men and women. It never mattered if it was a man or a woman, even when I was growing up deal with part of the problem because many of the, the the ways that you know people now behave towards um women particularly influenced by pornography culture i mean more than half of, ch of um, sexual offenses committed against child accord ch children again uh, according to the npcc are committed by other children so you have all of these other problems and the real elephant in the room of course is the fact that we have we effectively um have no control over our border we do not know who is coming in and of course that's going to put women and children at risk yes, um yes. so yes i do think that um andrew tate is not a good role model um but i think that we have a much much bigger problem on our hands okay and and jake just to challenge you on on these on online influencers like andrew tate i find that a lot of them are very outspoken about how people should be living their lives so marriage and having children yeah. and looking after your family and working hard but then you look at them and they're not really living their lives in that way they're usually unmarried they usually got lots of girlfriends they're usually just flashing superficial things like a new car and, and whatever else. Not necessarily living by the standards that they set for other men. Yeah, no, I think that that's a very fair assessment. Um, you'd have to tell me specific examples. If you're talking about Andrew Tate, I'm sure you're aware that he's converted to Islam. So he believes in the whole having five wives thing. I don't believe in that. But I think the more important issue here um, that our other guest, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name, but... Uh, just Emma. raised is the fact that you, Emma, sorry, is that you guys have like a lot of mass migration happening, which is a big problem. And this is something that's not new guys. Tommy Robinson was talking about this over a decade ago when he was saying that there are grooming gangs, grooming young women in English towns and the media and the police wanted nothing to do with it. 
Yeah, and there have been a number of inquiries into that now, and thankfully the problem is being uh, addressed and much more uh, spoken about in the mainstream, not least by our own Charlie Peters, who made a fantastic documentary on the grooming gang scandal aired here on GB News. Uh, I'm afraid we've run to the end of that conversation, but Jake Julius and Emma Webb, thank you so much for your... Yeah, I, um, shout out to Jake from Rattlesnake TV. I'll leave Same. a link in the description to his channel. He, I, I think he defended some of the masculine perspective very well. I think he could have gave pushback on the general ideas that people in the manosphere push because people in the manosphere, a lot of them, and this is just to be blunt, a lot of them are making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, so they are going to live their lives from a different prescription than what they may give to the general public as an effective way to live. Uh, now, you could call that hypocritical. I would agree. But a person who's in a specific position of privilege or more power ain't going to live his life the same way as an audience of people that where he might be talking to the general public because I this is 100 percent true this is just like how you know tony robbins and just all these guru types they're speaking they're speaking to the masses they're trying to tell the masses to do this certain thing but they might not be doing everything that they're saying because they've already made it they've already done those things they've already gotten to there to, to where they want to be. So now they get to coast. People get to coast. That's the great thing about success. Like, should you still struggle? Should you still do things the same way, even though you've made it? Some people say yes. Some people say no. I, I, I've somewhat made it. I make I make 100 grand now with YouTube and my other job. But I don't really live a flashy life. I don't tell you guys to live a flashy life. I don't show you I have a flash. I tell you guys I go out to eat all the time just because I don't cook, but it's just do the best you can. Like the, 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 what I prescribe and what most the guys in the manosphere prescribe is just the best possible scenario for most men out there. Is it the best for me? Probably not. Is it the best for you in particular? It might not be. I think for the general public, a good idea is to get married young, Agreed. Have kids, Agreed. get into a job quick, work your way up the ladder, save your money, don't go into debt. But for some people who might be making $20,000 a month, $30,000 a month because they, you know, they're on YouTube, the, the advice to those, that demographic of people specifically is just going to be different. Correct. So, yeah. And I always find it interesting that, uh, and the reason why a lot of people in the Manosphere spaces find these types of news broadcast to be kind of disingenuous is because they only talk about caring about young men when it comes to them potentially harming Hurting young women. women. When we know by and large men don't harm women. Most men protect women and children. That's the reason why we can exist as a society. If most men wanted to harm women and children, it would be happening at a higher rate and right. there would be nothing that women and children could do about it. I say this all the time to women. If men really got their way and what they wanted, you guys would just all be sex slaves with your asses up ready for men to just pound in whenever they want. Majority of men would want that. That's just it. But that's not how life is, is it? But because most men are not these evil people that the media uh, tries to make us out to be, most men are willing to die to protect women and children. So, uh, yeah, it, it, so they, they, they get disingenuous and they promote these ideas that, that young girls are at risk. And that's the only time they seem to care about what's, what's young boys motivating kind of young men or what's inspiring young men to be the way they are. Because they don't have a problem with young men being inspired by transgender people. Correct. They don't have a problem with young men being on all these uh, social media platforms and just having porn by OnlyFans models thrown in their face all day. They don't have a problem with any of that stuff. They don't have a problem with Cardi B influencing young women to not cook and clean, but let me show you how I got this ring and to do all the twerking and do all the degenerate shit that women do. But all of a sudden they have a concern when it comes to the safety of young women. They don't talk about the fact that between 18 and 40, the number one cause of of men l losing their lives is, is taking it themselves. They don't talk about it from that context. They never seem to talk about masculinity unless it evol involves women and being more charitable towards women from the masculine perspective. So a lot of young men are just starting to see it as disingenuous. They, they're starting to read the writing on the wall. Um, they're starting to feel like uh, mainstream media doesn't care about them. This is why I love saying it. The manosphere, red pill, we don't ever recruit. We don't have to. 
men flock to us in mass because of what's happening to them, of the things that they're experiencing themselves. It's been that way for the past 30 or 40 years, if you ask me. And a lot of guys are just like, fuck it. What's the point of being good if I don't get any benefit from it? Correct. The women in feminism tell me that if I'm a good guy, they don't want to date me because you're a good guy. Mm -hmm. If I am a good guy and I do get a woman, the state can just come in. And if she wants to divorce me because she's not happy, the state can come in and take my family apart. I won't be able to afford a house if I just get a job and work for my whole life. So you're, you want these young men to be good by your standard, but you give them no incentives to be that way. Correct. And then you act surprised when they eventually choose to not give a shit. Let me know in the comments below if this video was a WRL and give me the HBO special. That's a help brother out special. Hit the like and the subscribe button for more content. Till next time. Shout out to Poor Man for covering such nuanced topics and nuanced conversations like this. We need it. We need more conversations like this. We need more mainstream medias like this. We need more men like Jake from Rattlesnake. We need more men like Brian that are, 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 are railing against the narrative and railing against the thought process of a lot of women and men in this feminized world. Please subscribe to them. I really appreciate that. And you guys next time. Ciao.